Greetings, Hi. everyone. It's me, Banshee. And Oberon. And uh, welcome to the special Tarot for Today video presentation where <clears throat> I will be interviewing my partner, Oberon, and finding out just a little bit about his history with the tarot cards and divination. Ready? If you are. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, my first question for you is, how long have you been working with tarot and divination? A very long time. Probably with tarot cards, I got my first deck in 1972, coincidentally on my birthday. Just couldn't wait. I was 17 and I said, I'm going to do it. But other divination I actually dabbled with when I was younger, like maybe around 10 or 12, I started doing palmistry and astrology. So actually, it's been a pretty long time. Longer than I've known you. That is correct, Alex. <laughs> so uh, exactly what got you interested in tarot and divination? Well, I guess that's, you know, kind of a good question because I was always that kind of child. I was always that person that was interested in the Halloween things and the spooky things and the supernatural things. And I like to watch the Twilight Zone and shows like that when I was a child. And then, of course, there came the TV show Dark Shadows, where there were characters who actually were playing with these cards, throwing the cards on the table and telling other cast members or other actors in the show what those cards meant. And I was immediately fascinated because, of course, the cards that they used the most were the devil, the moon, and the tower. Interesting. So we can thank Dark Shadows for your uh, interest. In Obsession with tarot cards. Obsession. Yes. <laughs> and of course, they only used the standard uh, deck back then, the, uh, the French Marseille's deck. So the images were very uh, antique looking and just mysterious and pretty much drew me in as a kid. But probably a lot of other people watching that TV show in the uh, mid-60s, mid to late 60s, that was their first experience with something like tarot cards. Besides tarot, what other forms of divination do you do, if any? Well, as I mentioned, um, I also was uh, cutting my teeth a little bit on astrology and palmistry. Palmistry is something that I dabbled with more. I learned a little bit about it, but it didn't really ring true to me in terms of my ability to use it. I can refer to it a little bit, but astrology is also more in my bag of tricks. Uh, I was pretty good at casting a regular uh, horoscope, even when you didn't have the computer to help you compute all that. Um, interpretation is probably not my exact strongest uh, suite as far as astrology goes, but I think I'm a lot better than the average person reading astrology. I can kind of match up the uh, ideas about what certain transits uh, through your signs mean or what the meaning of uh, certain planets in your chart means. So I, I definitely can do a bit of NATO and sometimes a little bit of predictive astrology. So what would you say are your three top tarot or other divination decks? Well, there's a big problem with limiting me to three. <laughs> Hey, because there are so many that <laughs> I like. Cry me a river, wait till my turn. Usually the most favorite deck at any one time is probably the deck that I'm currently reading with, the one that I do the most readings for myself or for other people. And right now that would be the uh, Dame Fortune's deck, uh, the Wheel of Fortune, which was created by Paul Hewson. He's one of my favorite uh, writers on tarot cards. Um, the images are very similar to some of the antique, uh, more... French Marseilles, here we see the coins looking like, or the pentacles looking like coins, and the more medieval styles I'm looking for. Here we go, a knight. So very traditional yeah. looking. But images in the cards are very important, and so what he does with some of the, the meanings of the cards, it's maybe just a little bit different because his interpretation of the cards is a little different. So here we have the Eight of Swords, and the normal picture is somebody who is more or less um, captured or surrounded by the swords. In this one, it's a little bit more vague or dubious. And I think the idea is, is that the higher you go, the more entrapped you are by any of your circumstances. That this is a king, but still he sort of seems wary and tired. So just throwing that out there. 
Another favorite deck I have, of course, is one of my original decks, oh, which I don't even... That's an oldie. Don't even remember the name of the deck. It had a curious little background of keys on the back, so it might have been the key tarot or tarot the keys. But the images are basically pretty much exactly from the Raider White deck. Rider but colored Wait. Rider Waite. But colored very differently, a lot more of the 60s, 70s pop art kind of brighter colors. So I've already used this a few times in readings that we've done for our displays here on live stream. And um, I think they're very picturesque. And of course, they are like the Rider Waite, so they basically are good to go with uh, copyright differences. And then just as a shout out to our friends, Monty Farber and Amy Zerner, creator of many decks, I really love the tarot, the enchanted tarot that they've done. And they've just recently done a 25th anniversary of it. Oh, so yes. we're all dating ourselves here, but okay. that's basically a beautiful deck. These cards are good for meditations, affirmations. They're good for little ritual ideas or ceremonies. Um, it's a wonderful deck. And I do like it a lot. I tend to use it less for readings uh, for other people and more for personal readings. Besides that, I like some of the divination decks that are not exclusively tarot that are Egyptian themed. There's the Book of Doors, which uh, was about 20 years ago. It's very Egyptian oriented. And I also like uh, the, um, the New Orleans uh, no, that's a tarot. New Orleans tarot is a tarot. It just has a lot of voodoo images. But there's uh, various other decks. I like the Anubis uh, Oracle by Nikki Scully. And once again, a highly Egyptian theme. So those are a few of my favorite decks. Probably many. Of many, yes. Uh, is there a specific tarot card that you feel represents you or that you strongly relate to? Well, yes, and that's a good question, too. And I think that just because you grow through the cards, if you are also trying to do uh, experiential growth through the cards, you evolve. And so my perceptions about what card relates to myself has evolved, too. And I think for many years, I felt I was the Page of Cups because that meaning of the more poetic and mystical nature of life was really what I felt was strong quality within myself. The Cups cards are water cards. That card might pertain more to a Piscean type of personality. But as a Scorpio, I feel, you know, awfully intuitive at times. And I think that card was the card for me. In more recent years, I've moved on to other cards. Uh, I like the Knight of Cups as well. But I also relate uh, strongly to cards like the Moon, uh, the Hero of Fent, um, and to some degree, the Devil. Mostly because I feel that the Devil card really represents a shaking off of those bonds that are holding us to more material existence. And I think that's, for me, kind of the, the inner meaning of the devil card is it really is about being overly in, overwhelmed with the um, material uh, you know, parts of our lives. And so a lot of that for me is, is basically looking at that as a symbol of evolvement. Okay. That's very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> well, explain a little bit to our audience about your psychic and intuitive abilities. Well, I think everybody is a little bit psychic, but I think people need different mediums to help express that. And I think you don't realize that right away when you're working with tarot cards or certain systems. Uh, there are other systems where maybe you realize it right away. Like if you're, you start scrying and it works immediately, you realize this is me. This is not the crystal ball showing me a picture. This is me. But with tarot cards, it might be a little more subtle because it is presenting more data in front of you rather than it just coming totally out of your head. So you're looking at cards and those cards are the framework for what you're seeing there. And they may hinge on actual personalities, but more likely they hinge on things that are going on there. And so I feel that those abilities within myself grew slowly at first, but then a lot better because the ultimate goal with working with cards is to have that card have, to some degree, a personal meaning. The personal meaning is not necessarily the meaning you're always gonna pull out when you're reading for somebody, but it's gonna inspire you to, to feel that other intuition or reading that maybe is right for that person. Another thing that's happened with me with uh, 
psychic or intuitive abilities is that at times, uh, and maybe the time I did this was longer ago, um, I worked also with psychometrizing, with holding a ring or a piece of uh, jewelry or something that belonged to a person, and then I could, you know, basically get a vibration from that. I worked with that for a while because it actually was pretty successful. Uh, it may be possible now that those impressions I get are just coming to me more free form. Um, so I may not work with that as much, but occasionally I still do. You also uh, read auras, I believe. I don't know that I read auras, but I can sense and see auras and I can diagnose them a little bit. So usually when I see an aura, I know what some of the basic colors mean. So it's not reading it in the sense of yeah, getting a reading off it. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it still is kind of a nifty trick, and usually when uh, I try to cooperate with other people who either know what their aura is or have seen their aura or other auras, it's kind of interesting when you can, you know, pull that out and, and people realize that's something. So tell me, why do you like to read for others? As always, another good question, and I think, um, <clears throat> I think it really revolves around the fact that even from the earliest time of doing tarot cards, what I really felt was going on was that I was providing service to others. And as I eventually grew more talented and more uh, set in what I was doing, I also felt that this was an opportunity for me to provide a sense of healing to people. And I think that to some degree, this goes along with what we've talked about before in a different video about our differences in readings where my readings maybe are looking a little bit at some more, you know, airy-fairy spiritual aspects about those situations I've seen in the card. And that's probably because, uh, to some degree, I'm trying to understand them at a heartfelt level and maybe shine out a little bit of healing or support or an affirmation through what I'm seeing towards that person. So what I really like doing when I read cards is the sense that I'm also healing other people. I'm healing myself because I feel it's good for me to have this practice. It's my connection with spirit, but I'm also sharing that with others, so it's a sense of healing. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers today? We hope to have stock options open soon. <laughs> no, we don't even know anything about that. But I don't we know what do he's think talking about. When, when we're a big enough company for people to want to invest in us, Oh, I didn't think we were going corporate. We're going yes, corporate. <laughs> CEO OB. CEO OB. That does not have a ring to it. No, I suppose I've shared enough. Oh, okay. You know how Scorpios are, everybody. They're only going to tell you so much. So keep watching. <laughs> anyway, thanks for spending some time with us today. And, uh, I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about my experiences with the tarot next. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh,